Welcome to Mama Talk Talks, A Different Take, a podcast where everyday people around the globe share a different take on everyday issues. I'm your host, Abi Mambo, and I'm pleased you're joining us today. Welcome. Hi, guys. Welcome to Mama Talk Talks, A Different Take. Hi. Hi, yeah, Bam. <laughs> So I'm really, really, really excited to welcome you to the show. So for the audience, I need to introduce you to my sister, Masayo. A lot of people, when they hear that, they go, how is she your sister? So we can tell that story <laughs> later. <laughs> so Masayo and I went to law school together. And we, from the first year we got in, just became really close friends. And I don't remember how we became sisters. Do you remember that story? <laughs> don't remember but somehow we were just like hey sis <laughs> and it just stuck <laughs> and, and we'd introduce us this is masayo my sister and people would really take us seriously and you used to do that weird thing where they look at us cross-eyed and you'd go what she couldn't be my sister what are you trying to say <laughs> what are you saying <laughs> exactly wow. welcome ali as well masayo's husband that, that's your title for this show, Masayo's Husband. So yeah. what I love to do on this show is to, when I welcome the guests, is to allow you all the opportunity to introduce yourself. So, Masayo? Oh, I'm going first. Um, hi, everyone. Yeah. I'm Masayo. How would I introduce myself in this context? I suppose I'm a wife, which is kind of weird. Um, <laughs> I usually don't think about myself in that way, but... Yeah, I've known you, Abam, for many, many years. I live in San Francisco now. After law school, I lived in Tokyo for a while and worked in big law, and then moved to San Francisco with the law firm, and then went in-house, and now I'm at a tech company. Okay. All right. Ali? Um, hi, I'm Ali Asare, and I'm Asayo's husband. And Abam's friend by extension, and brother, brother-in-law by extension. Yes. <laughs> and I met Masayo at the law firm in San Francisco. So we uh, are beginning our relationship. Uh, we we met at work, so that's how we met each other. Well, we overlapped like a week. Very yeah, brief. It was actually my very last week. Um, when we started dating, so I was I was piecing out. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, worked out perfectly. I knew Ali had game, but I need to understand how he got this on lockdown in a week. Like, can you can you help me? <laughs> how, did, how did that happen? I mean, it was probably like the seven martinis or eleven martinis. <laughs> 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 okay, for real, how did you guys meet I mean, at the no. firm? But I'm interested in that one week period where you are now I, here. I will answer. So, uh, you know, you're Masayo's sister, but you know, she has an incredible, amazing energy, like of, of competence and power and awesomeness. So I remember showing up to her office and the first thing I saw was motorcycle helmets all on the shelf like a professional <laughs> motorcyclist so i expected to see like a like a maybe a guy or something and i was and i look and it's masaya and her nails were so beautiful so it was both like the motorcycle power and nail power and then <laughs> dressed up like an amazing lawyer and she was the boss of all the associates so she had the boss power so i yeah. just like oh my god what a what a unique amazing individual and, and I wish I, I thought he was the new marketing guy. <laughs> oh, he, I wish he was from New York, and he was like wearing this like three-piece suit with like a pocket square or something. And I was like, <laughs> "Who?" I mean, we're in San Francisco, right? And so he like knocked on the door, and he's like, "Hi!" <laughs> and I'm like, "Who?" Okay. I think the first thing I said was, "May I help you?" <laughs> And what she really meant was, why are you here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. The three-piece suit, Ali, the three-piece suit is amusing to me for a number <laughs> of reasons. 
not the least of which is I totally know how Masaya would have looked at that. This is the woman who wore jeans and a nice shirt with three or four inch heels to class every day. <laughs> like, I, I don't know how, I'm like, Masaya, your feet don't hurt? You're like, what? Why? <laughs> <laughs> oh, things have changed. <laughs> that oh, how that? <laughs> Are you tired now? <laughs> I am so tired now. I mean, we've been sheltering in place for a while too, but also like just being in the Bay Area, nobody wears heels. Like no, no one. And I'm like, why? So what happened with all your fabulous shoes? You have I amazing have shoes. I have them. I have a whole closet of fabulous shoes, but I don't know if my feet fit in them anymore. <laughs> anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow so just going back i remember we we're talking earlier on ali and i about about the wedding and how it was just so much fun to me but i have to i have to confess when masayo first told me about you ali i was like japanese iranian i don't think i've ever heard of this combination before but what as you as you dated is was your racial heritage or your cultural heritage a significant part of your relationship or was it just we're post-racial we don't deal with these things it's not it's not a reality how was that for you two you want to go first Sh sure um so great question there's a lot to unpack there of um um i think I, I, I would slightly correct it because I went into it also wondering if, you know, an Iranian person and a Japanese person, both, both of our parents lived in like Iran and Japan. So it wasn't like, it wasn't like we were fully Japanese American and Iranian American. We had the whole heritage back home too, right? And our wedding, my, my parents came from Iran. Masayo's parents came from Japan. So it was a real, it was a real um, cultural difference, right? But to me, the more and more we are married and we go down the road, it's what's more relevant is the family, not the culture. So I think mm. where, where we have had to work through things um, or where things have either worked well or not worked well, it wasn't because it was Iranian culture versus Japanese culture. It was because we had grown up in different or similar families and different or similar parents' approaches. Mm -hmm. what do you think uh i i i agree with that to a certain extent i i do think that culture sort of informs like how your family might tend to be um mm -hmm. in some ways mm -hmm. right like i i feel like um like one of the big differences um that we struggled with at the beginning was how much time you spend with your family members yeah. and it, you know i think that you know my family specifically because we were stuck in the middle of nowhere in america without relatives you know like w we didn't spend much time with family period um and when we did spend time together it was when we visited japan so it was very yeah. concentrated time um, that is something that's specific to my family, but I yep. also think for like culturally, you know, mm. it, it, it's not, it's not that common that you would live with your aunties and uncles and, you know, have like people milling about all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, like, so I, that's where yeah, I, yeah, I feel like yeah, a little yeah. bit like culturally, um, um. Like, I, I do think there was some influence. Yeah. But it was also really interesting because we found that there are a lot of similarities in our cultures, too. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I think that what, what made it easy, like, was kind of the immigrant mm -hmm. experience. We were, yeah, both, yeah. we're both immigrants, but Americanized enough so we can kind of you know, navigate those two mm -hmm. worlds mm -hmm. um, fairly easily. Yeah. Um, and I think the fact that we were both in that position, 
we weren't asking each other like, oh, so you, do you like, you know, think of yourself as this or that? Like we weren't asking each other to choose. We just intuitively understood, yes, like you, you've had to navigate two different worlds your whole life, right? Like, it, and I think that, that was like a shared language in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, one of the things <clears throat> I wanted to get out of this particular show is really to show people, because I think the, the idea of marriage, right, is one way it's either glorified or vilified. Very few people kind of are just in that middle space where marriage is just marriage. So I wanted to talk to you too about that and give my listeners and viewers just a, one version, right, of what a marriage looks like without glorifying or vilifying it which is why I'll be asking you just questions which are quite specific and personal about just how you do married. So during your, during your courtship phase, and by the way, Ali, I totally get it. I know she doesn't about like growing up with uncles and aunts and the whole, <laughs> Ali, if we were married, I would just, I'll, I'll just be like, yo, that's what happens. We had, we had summers growing up where a, a, a household of seven people would sometimes be a household of 15 people. And it's just what it was. And you just understand it and you just roll with it, right? You just sleep on the floor and everyone sleeps yes. on the floor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, put the mattress down. Me out. I was like, no, like we can't. It is not acceptable that I am hosting somebody and they sleep on the floor. Marcel was like, we need to get seven hotel rooms. And I was like, no, no, no. They, no, they always they sleep on the floor. Here. Exactly. And same thing for us. And the whole idea of the other thing was people having to call before they show up. Mm. I was like, no, oh my God. bring yeah. up. People just, people just show up. What do you mean they have to call? Like this person is coming and then there's food and they eat and you hang out and then you go. And I know it's very different in, 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 in different parts of the world. Yeah. Yeah. We had the, every one of these problems we, we have talked about. <laughs> <laughs> I can see Masayo going, no, Thursday is not a good day for visiting. Can you come next month? And Ali said, but that is my great grand aunt's cousin's friend. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like the other extreme was, I, I think um, I was really sick one time. And his parents wanted to come out. He was like, hey, you know, like, wake up. My parents are going to come over. They want to, like, see you because you're sick. And I'm like, no, I don't want to see it. And he said, oh, but, but they're, you know, like, but they're my parents. And I'm like, they're not my parents. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Totally different expectations. Yeah, it's, it's very different. And, and the, 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 the fascinating thing about that is they're probably coming at it from a, oh, our son's wife is sick. Let's come see her. And as a gesture of goodwill and make sure she's okay. Whereas from your end, it's more of a, no, I'm sick. I really don't have the energy to meet people, greet people. I, I don't want to make you sick either. Yeah, so I, I, I totally get it. In, in terms of uh, your wedding, I had so much fun at, at that wedding. It was ridiculous. Um, <laughs> in trying to fuse the two cultures, what were some of the decisions you had to make around the wedding? Because I know weddings, even between two people of the same culture, can be very hair-raising. For both of you, how was planning the wedding? I feel like we were both pretty chill about it um, in the grand scheme of things. Like, we, we were both very aligned and, like, we wanted – to spend all of our money on the venue and the food and the booze. Like we didn't really care about flowers. We didn't really, you know, like we wanted good music, but it, it wasn't like we, oh my gosh, like these colors or like linens or whatever, you know, we were like, no, we want a good party. <laughs> yeah. So I think that made it easier. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't really have, I mean, I think on my side, like I didn't really have any like, culturally i we must incorporate this or that um because mm -hmm. like a lot of people in japan have western weddings yeah so that i think made it a little easier um maybe 
But I also kind of feel like, I mean, you weren't like, I want a super traditional yeah. Persian wedding either. We both, we both followed like what, what we liked about our culture. So Masayo wanted a, a kimono pre-wedding. Like she wanted to wear a kimono pre-wedding night. So we did that. That was awesome. Mm -hmm. For the wedding, I wanted to have the, the Persian corner where people could see like how we do it. So it was, it, it worked out pretty, pretty fine. But we're also both uh, transactional lawyers. So we, we get things <laughs> done. Yes. So it was very much like, here's our spreadsheet. You go do this. I'll go do that. And we'll take care of it. So yeah. it's very smooth closing. <laughs> yeah. And of course, I I'm happy that you incorporated aspects of your culture because selfishly, selfishly, I really enjoyed the wedding dance. And I got to tell you, I watched so many videos on that before I came because I was going to be like, I'm not going to be the one who's going to mess up this thing. I'm not going to be the one who's going to drop the knife or not get the money for the girl. <laughs> so, for, so for your viewers who don't know, Abam did this amazing uh, part took in, uh, there's a Persian knife dance tradition in the wedding where before you cut the cake, uh, different guests can take the knife and dance with it. And Abam did an amazing Persian dance. That was, that was one. You had done a lot of research, Abam, I could tell. I did. How much did we get for you, Masayu? I don't remember. It was quite a few hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. I don't remember. Yeah. Like that's the thing about weddings, right? Like you, you don't remember. You don't remember. Yeah, yeah. But you two are much more than Japanese and Iranian or American. You're much more than your culture. You're much more than your nationality. So I want to get to some things that are other aspects of you and your, and your relationship. You're both lawyers, transactional lawyers. You both worked at law firms and you're very, very driven, both of you. And so how, how does that work in a marriage where you have two people who have careers that are really successful and who are very focused on their careers? How do you, how do you manage things like, do you wanna have kids or not? How do you plan vacations? What kind of conversations do you have around if Ali got, you know, a great opportunity in another city? What would Masayo do? Just how do you guys talk about work um, in, your, in your marriage? Go first. No, um, <laughs> I think it all goes back to the same core, Abansa. So it's, um, it's hard to answer the specific question without talking about the core, which is, I think over the years, we, and I talk for myself, at least I have learned so much about communication and really listening and understanding your partner. And so I think we have a really good understanding of what each other's priorities are and mm -hmm. what each other's needs are. And so for all of these big decisions like career, like uh, wedding, what aspects of culture to work in, um, it's constant work, but it goes back to that that understanding and that communication. Honestly, I think <laughs> I think it's working because of Ali. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was gonna be interesting, but then you leave it to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> like, I have a secret. Um, yeah. So, so the scenario of like one person gets a job in a different city. Like, what do you do? Like, we haven't. Um, come across that yet mm -hmm. um so I, I think that's kind of a we'll, we'll see um but in our day-to-day -day, I think that we we're just talking about this earlier today actually I um tend to I think work longer hours and I think Ollie is much better at you know balancing things yeah um, yeah. And so I think when I say like, I think this is working because of him, it's, it's really because he gives me the space to be mm -hmm. really intense about something. And then when I come, you know, back to life, um, then we kind of interact as people. Um, <laughs> and we don't really, um, I don't think we get into a lot of like, arguments about like whose life is more important because we just we just both do our thing 
Um, mm -hmm. There's not a lot of instances where it really clashes. Um, you know, I, I think it comes up when like you might have a call, but I'm really hungry or like I might still be working and he's cooked dinner, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I think we, we try to like wait for the other person, but if we get too hungry, we eat and nobody gets mad about it. You know, like yeah. it's, it's mm -hmm. silly stuff like that. Um, and I think with vacations, like, you always want to go to Hawaii and I'm like, I can't take off work right now. And, but he just goes. So it's not like a lot of autonomy. There's just, it's a relationship that respects each person's space. Although at least looking out the window. <laughs> no, no. What are you so, thinking? No, I was thinking about your words when you said a lot of autonomy um but but so I, I was i was not sure i agreed with that but then you said respect and i 100 percent agree with that it's a lot of yeah. respect because i deep down like i respect what masaya does when she's focusing on something like i respect mm. that she is making the right decision to focus on that thing in that moment because i respect her judgment i respect that she's doing the right thing so it doesn't, it may be wow. the annoyance of we need to eat, but it's not a judgment or a, a, a deep disagreement, you know? Yeah. That is so, that is, that is incredible. Like it's light bulb moment for me, right? And, and, and the exact part is where, where you said, I respect not just what she's doing, but the fact that she's made the decision to do that. And mm -hmm. I trust that it's the right mm -hmm. thing that she's doing because in all of that you you're also saying in a way if she's making the decision to do this over having dinner with me it's because right now in this moment is the more important of the two things yeah, yeah. and that moment of respect i think is trust i think that's really amazing yeah because it's a way i think that egos get in the way of relationships sometimes right and it's like well you won't have dinner with me for the third night in a row and to just if you if you afford your partner the space and the trust that you just talked about, Ali, I think, I think, yeah, that, that, that one. I'm just yeah. thinking about it. Yeah, yeah, that comes, like, the other side of it is when you do need your partner, it's, the, it's for them to come through because at that moment you do need them and you are the most important thing, right? So it's a, it's a constant, it's like uh, having coins in the bank or something, right? It's constant play on that of showing up when it matters yeah. and then maybe when it matters less you don't so then how, how do you know the difference so let's say like in in the scenario with with i i need us to eat now because i need to talk to you about something i've got a deal going on H how do you signal or how do you notice the signal from the other person when it's time to stop what you're doing and talk to me Great that question. is a good question. Um, and I think, uh, can, can we talk about the yesterday? Oh, everything. So, so good example. Um, I think Ali mentioned the summer six to you, right? And yesterday was the first session. So, so these are some programs I'm holding this summer that I'm super passionate about. Like I organized workshops to help students find jobs, etc. And yesterday was the first session of that. So it's a panel mm -hmm. over Zoom. And, you know, I, we've been talking about this for weeks. I know how excited he is and how committed he is to, like, helping the students. So, you know, all throughout the day, he's, like, trying to, like, set up this background and, like, set up his computer just right and pick out his outfit. And, and finally the time comes. And I'm in our other room working. And... Part of me was curious, and I, I was tempted to come out um, to where he's sitting and just kind of sit, like, lurk nearby. But I was like, <laughs> that might throw off his game. So I kind of was stuck in this other room. Um, and I thought, like, it's kind of weird if I also participate, you know, like, log into the Zoom. But I, I'm listening. <laughs> I'm kind of listening like on the surface level, just to say, okay, like I can kind of tell where in the program they are. Things seem to be going okay. They're not having any disasters. 
Um, but you know, I, I'm, I'm listening and kind of working. Right. Um, yeah. And unbeknownst to me, like this whole time, all he's thinking, Oh, it's like, this is my priority. I'm sure that my partner is being supportive by listening to the entire session. So when it was all said and done, he like, you know, he wanted to talk about it, but I wasn't listening to the whole thing. Um, and I was trying to wrap up work and whatnot. And so it's, you know, like, I, I think those things happen. Um, and so in the moment, I think it's hard to tell, like, is this a moment where I need to drop everything and be there for my partner or maybe like what I'm doing is okay. But yeah. what I will say is it's amazing what the human mind um, can pick up on because as soon as, yeah. as soon as he like kind of, he, he never, he didn't say anything. You know, he didn't tell me he was upset about it until today. But in the back of my head, like I knew, you know, yeah. like in yeah. that moment, I'm like, something's wrong. Like, I think. But you knew during the program? No. Or after? After. So after, um, you know, like you and I talk about it and I was like trying to wrap up and we were, you know, trying to figure out dinner and all this stuff. But there was a moment, like, um, I think, you know, you were just like sitting at the table and I looked at you and I'm like, you seem down. Like I was moping <laughs> really hard to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> I was like <laughs> Noted. Noted. <laughs> it's not the amazing human mind. It's <laughs> Yeah, so I don't I don't think it's like so much about being able to predict. I think mm -hmm. the more important mm -hmm. thing is just that like you you're two different humans, right? Like you're going to mess up. It's so much more important to learn how to repair mm. than to like focus on not screwing up in the first place. Mm. Yeah. About the best yeah. lesson I learned was, um, and this is so typical in relationships. Like one person says, I'm mad at you. Uh, you brought your parents over. I'm mad. Right. And the other person says, but why are you mad? Like there's nothing to be mad about. You deny the emotion of the other person and you try to explain it away. Whereas, yeah. The best lesson I learned when we, when we started going to therapy together was the first lesson was feelings are facts. Like feelings are true. If someone gets upset, it's the truth. They are yeah. upset. Like you can't explain it away. You can't uh, whitewash it. You got you to gotta talk about it. You got to acknowledge it and then talk about it. So you're absolutely right. Like these hard moments still come up. We, there's still stuff happens. There's still the, yeah. we stand on the wrong side of the line every once in a while. But we have learned to not get mad at each other when we talk about it after and not get defensive and not get, uh, or we haven't learned. We still um, struggle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we're conscious of it. We're conscious of it. Like when those things come up, we're like, okay, like I'm getting defensive. Like let's backtrack. Right. Yeah. So I would say, you know, like a few years ago, the conversation might have gone something like, you know, like I'm really mad at something. Um, and he would say, oh, don't be mad. And then he, and then it would get heated. Mm -hmm. And eventually you would say, well, if I was in your position, mm -hmm. I wouldn't mm -hmm. be mad. And, mm -hmm. and we were stuck in that yeah. cycle, right? And yes. so I feel like we're not, we're not doing all those loops yep. before we get to the actual thing now. Like we just, yeah. Yeah. And have you, have you two found if you look back at previous relationships, how would you say your communication is? Because Ali, you were mentioning earlier about how critical communication is. And I hear people say things like, put it all on the table. Do you two put it all on the table? And is it a good idea to put it all on the table? We have different answers. What's your answer? <laughs> uh, one, one quote I read recently that really resonated with me said, uh, honesty without sensitivity is cruelty. Yeah. And I really like that, that because, um, uh, yeah, I don't think putting it all on the table, if it's hurtful and insensitive, is necessarily the right thing. Whereas I, I think you value 
truth a lot more in that sense. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you've already like shaded it a little bit here. Um, <laughs> I so it was uh, so we have this question of like you know would you rather have uh, be happy or know uh, the truth? Truth or happiness? What's your answer, mm -hmm. Obama? Three, two, one. Truth or happiness? Happiness. Me, happiness. Yeah. So, truth, happiness, happiness. Yeah. So yeah. I would say the truth. Like I, I would want to know. Um, but I agree. Like it doesn't mean like you say mean things. Yeah. But I don't think, I don't think it's worth hiding something. Yeah. 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 Actually, it ties back to an earlier point. Like, it doesn't matter what, like, you're, you're, you're truth, I'm happiness, you're happiness. It doesn't matter. That's not the point. The yeah. point is, that's what matters to you. And I know, uh, me knowing that, and like me, like, I know, like, lying is the worst thing to do with you, for example, because I know that about you. So it's, it's, it's respecting the other person's values. Yeah. See, for me, those two things, I say happiness because underneath happiness is true for me. I always, I, always, I always say to my friends and to my partner, the worst thing you can do to me is to lie to me because that will make me incredibly unhappy. And the place that it takes me to is a place of, do you think I'm dumb and I couldn't figure this out? Right? That's the first thing that comes to mind. Or if you're lying about this, and I find out, um, it's going to make me unhappy because I start thinking, what else are you lying about? So for me, happiness does not necessarily mean, you know, not telling the truth. It means to me telling the truth in that way where it can land because I know if you, if you don't tell me the truth, there's not going to be joy. But if I have this blissfulness that's going on and underneath it is a lie, oh, there'll be hell to pay when the truth comes out. <laughs> All kinds of hell. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Masayo, so I understand pretty early on in the relationship, you took you both to therapy. Now, most couples do this when things start to go bad or they're actually on the verge of divorce or they're actually divorcing and then it's a last ditch attempt to make things work. Why therapy and why at that point in the relationship? Um, so I, I turned, uh, you know, I, I became a believer after I had gone through it myself. So mm -hmm. I, I think I was pretty, you know, maybe typically Japanese in the sense that like I was very anti-therapy. Um, it wasn't until I went to college and, you know, I met a, a lot of different people and there were a lot of people, um, I guess who, who were wealthier and they're like, oh yeah, like everyone has a therapist. And even then I was like, that's weird. Like that is, that is not a, you know, a normal thing. And so I kind of chalked it up to like these screwed up East coasters. Right. <laughs> um, and then many, many years passed and, you know, like I moved back to Japan and all this stuff. And then, uh, I finally, finally agreed to try couples counseling as part of a prior relationship because it was almost an act of desperation. I thought if, if I go beyond my comfort zone and try this, and it doesn't work, then I can say, you know what, I, I gave it my all, right? Mm. Um, and so that's what I did. And I found that it was um, really helpful in the sense that I've, I realized, you know, like I can make any relationship work. There's not a whole lot that's, you know, inherent, um, like it's not, you know, I, I just didn't want that particular one to work. Um, and it just took me, I think it took me a, a while as somebody who was, you know, constantly doing like what I thought I should do, right? Like you should yeah. get friends, you should like be successful, you should be nice, you should be this and that. Um, 
it took me a really long time to understand there are certain things that you can have like a preference about and it's yeah. okay yeah. right like, it's not rejecting like mm -hmm. someone in in the same way that you you reject like the existence of someone or you're mean to somebody it it's just you know like this is the one relationship where you get to say you know um i prefer like you know like it's like ice cream flavors right there, there's literally no reason yep you just like this flavor this like, is probably different. like my seven coconut layer crunch at ben and jerry's yes <laughs> i don't know why i like it i just do yes. <laughs> And it does not mean that you hate every other flavor, right? It just means yeah. that's the one for me. Um, yeah. And so I think, I think it was just kind of learning, oh, like there's so many tools and so many ways to think of things. Um, and I think it, there's something very, very powerful about having a third party, you know, who's not your friend, who's not your family, like somebody completely neutral, who's a professional um, to, I mean, especially for like me, like I'm really stubborn, right? So to hear somebody you say, don't say. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're, they're so good at like kind of gently saying, maybe you could consider this other perspective. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I do? <laughs> yeah. No, I hear it. I hear it. And was it, Ali, was it hard for you at first when she introduced the idea? Or were you just like, okay, let's, let's do it? It was like 5% weird uh, in that sense of why are you, why are you suggesting, we just met, you know, we've we known each other for six months. Like we already have to go to therapy, but I, I was, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a curious person myself too. And I've had some limited experiences before too, so I went and it's life changing. I mean, it's the best thing. It's one of the like top two or three best things that has ever happened to me. So thank you. That was amazing. I mean, I think like we really kind of treat it just like you, you know, like people say like, oh, like you should exercise, right? Like you should, it's the same thing. Like you can't do nothing and then in a time of crisis expect you to be yeah. able yeah, to, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some yeah. sessions are not, some sessions are whatever. Like you go and you come out with nothing, but it's, you, without that preparation, you never have those moments. And those moments are few and far in between, but they're life-changing. Yeah. I'm just gonna say this because I've been noticing it and it's really cute. The way Ali just looks at you and he's talking, it's like first love vibes. I love it. It's just, yeah. And I keep looking at you. <laughs> you guys just make me. <laughs> no, you, you do. You, no, you look at him. But is, is there's an intensity with how like he's he's looking at you as if he you guys just met. Um, and and I, I find it really funny that I think I've had the same reaction, Ali, like like you did, which is. I've only known you six months. Why, why are we going to therapy? What are you trying to say? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. like, are we that messed up? But it, it, it's an idea that is, is not, I, I hope starts to take root more in whatever version, because I know I grew up Catholic. And so the priest plays a pretty big role in marital counseling. And so I think when we talk about it, it's important to give it a broad enough definition that people can apply to their own context. Um, but I, I, I know the benefit of it. I talk about it a lot in the context of mental health and just other issues because for some reason we, we try to take care of our bodies, but the stuff that goes on in here, we just, and in here, we just don't do a good enough job taking care of that. And we think we can go to a doctor when we're feeling sick, but then we can handle mental and emotional issues by ourselves. I don't, I don't understand that entirely. Yeah, and there are so many things that we've learned, you know, like fights or, you know, things like just general feeling of like anxiety or stress where we, we're not connecting it to anything specific, but as we talk through it, we're like, oh, like maybe, you know, it's actually this other thing or like, oh, I, I 
totally didn't see that, you know, my experience has kind of colored the, you know, my lens with which I'm looking at the situation. Um, so I think a lot of it is just, you know, like it takes a professional to, to connect those dots sometimes. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. I have a few questions for you and I'll just throw them out. Try to answer them at the same time. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Who takes longer to get ready? He does. <laughs> <laughs> I'm speechless. <laughs> Masai didn't even hesitate. <clears throat> Let me drink. My throat is a bit scratchy. Who spends more money? He does. My dear. <laughs> <laughs> Who would adopt a child? You, you would. If I um, oh, like who would adopt a child first? We're both pro-adoption. Okay. Okay. But, Maybe a little more? But yeah, you're, you're more giving. <laughs> so you take the money and spend on you, and when she does, she's more giving. You should have also asked who <laughs> makes more money. Masai. <laughs> it's, it's on the list. It's it actually on the list. So I, I guess you've answered it. <laughs> it, was, it was on the list. Um, who, who would do something more dangerous? As in... Masayo. Uh, oh, okay. I didn't know you to explain it. <laughs> like extreme sports. The motorcycle thing kind of gave it away. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. When you start graying, which of you is more likely to color your hair, to dye your hair? Me? I don't... I don't know. Well, he's, we, he's we both... graying. I'm not. <laughs> that was the biggest laugh of the night. Oh, uh, that's hilarious. Which of you is more likely to run for political office? Yeah. I am, yeah. I, I can totally see that. You're like <laughs> man of people. Masayo is like, keep me away from that stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have a joke that Masayo loves persons, but maybe not people. <laughs> That is such an accurate depiction. Yes, I would agree yes. with that. <laughs> she loves on the one-on-one. Yeah. On one, she will. She will give you everything. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Which of you is more likely, if you were given the sole authority, which of you is more likely to enact the death penalty? Me. Masayo, it was yeah. entirely up to you. The look on your face was like, Steve, you know this. You know it's me. Like, why are you asking this question? <laughs> yeah, Masaya has a very strong sense of justice and fairness. Mm -hmm. I think fairness for you is a very, very strong motivation. Yeah. Okay. Which of you will tolerate living in South Dakota? Better. Me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why is it Ohio? <laughs> yeah. W w why you? Is he, is he a big city person? Um, I think so. Like, it's not so much that he's a big city person. I think it's that he's never lived, like, in the middle of nowhere. And especially, oh. like, I feel like the older I get, I miss that quiet, you know? Mm. 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 Yeah, I hear you. Which of you is more likely to work in the Trump White House? Oh. Yeah. Neither of us, yeah. <laughs> is that an absolute no go zone not going to happen? No, no. Oh. Honestly, okay. I would just, I'd rather work at Starbucks. <laughs> like, I would give up my job and the money and everything. Like, you know, the intellectual, like, engagement. Yeah. And yeah. I would, I would literally just make coffee. Work at Starbucks. 
Mm. Yeah. Which of you is most likely to cry after a fight? Me. After, I... after though, not during. I've, I'll cry after. <laughs> yeah, I cry at everything. <laughs> So, so, so you cry during and Ali cries after? So you guys just take turns and like populate your arguments with tears at different points. <laughs> yeah, because my mode of communication is moping around and just being like sad about it after. Whereas you, you, you argue in the moment. Mm. If you had a difficult, nasty neighbor, which of you is more likely to get in their face about it? <laughs> me. <laughs> that was so fast. It sounds like something that has happened. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Final question. Final question. Which of you is most likely to fight to the end for your marriage if it goes south? Oh. I think me. I say me. <laughs> <laughs> Really? Why? Hmm. I'm more I'm more romantic about marriage than you are. So I think to the extent of that, I'll be like, we gotta save this marriage. <laughs> That's interesting, because I guess I was thinking like, if there's zero romance, like you might be like, oh, it's dead, you know. Like, I kind of view it more as like a, like, this is a team. Like, this, you can't quit the team. So you, you'll fight more, you say? Hmm. It's a good question. <laughs> like, what do you mean by fight? Right? Because, like, there's, I mean, there's lots of marriages where people stay in it mm. and don't yeah. fight. Mm. Necess like do you call that fighting because you're 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 in it and you hope that something changes or i don't know that's a good question so like fight to keep it together right not not in the whole stay in your own wing of the house type fight but like it's all going to hell and you're saying no there's still something here which of you is most likely to be like there's still something here we've, well, we've got he is definitely more likely to do the romantic <laughs> gestures for sure yeah. and you're more likely to say we're a team you can't get off the team <laughs> i'm i'm the chaser yeah yeah but it sounds like you're the chaser and she's the binder right that's what it sounds like because what i hear masayo saying is no we're a team we came into this mess together we gonna fix it together yeah like you're more likely to do the romantic gestures if, if I guess, things just kind of fizzled. Yeah. I guess. If our marriage is in peril because of some, like, outside thing, like, yeah, you know, like yeah, one yeah. of us gets sick or, yeah, like, yeah, somebody's yeah. trying okay, to hurt okay. you. Okay. Then I feel like I, yeah. I would absolutely fight more right she yeah yeah you would yeah. you would grab the doctor out of their home and their day off <laughs> like, <laughs> yes well yes. I, that was that was a tough question that's a tough question <laughs> that's i can teach for last I can that's a good last. question <laughs> and i love how you, you you both thought about it right because it can be very presumptuous to just think that you know you're going to be the, the the savior of the relationship but you both were really thinking about it so thank you so much just for sharing that. Like I said, I didn't even think Masaya was going to agree to do this because I know you're a pretty private person. Um, so just, it's been such a pleasure. All right, you guys, I know it's late in Cali and it was lovely. So I'll let you go. I hope with this whole COVID thing, we'll, when I'm next in San Fran, we'll be able to get together and just not do a podcast, but just. <laughs> that would be lovely. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Have a good night. Bye. 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 I hope you enjoyed our latest episode. Share your thoughts in the comments below 
or by emailing ab at mamatalktalk.com. Continue the conversation in your homes and communities. And when you join us next week, please invite a friend or many. For more diverse perspectives on everyday issues from everyday people around the globe, please subscribe to our podcast at mamatalktalk.com forward slash a different take. And join our online family by following us on Twitter and Instagram. Until we meet again, I'm your host, Evie Mambo. Sigashina, stay well. I love, I love that and, and the ownership of that because you said, I hope that he picks me. Mm-hmm. But the reality of this, if, if you were with the man who had a child, it's not even a discussion. There's nothing to talk about. <laughs> you don't have to be picked. You are the default, no, <laughs> right? You're the default. They're not too late. There's one late and that. Hey, it. but you know what? There might be a case where there is no child, but then they are friends that he has to be with. Girl. <laughs> yes. 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 Or there's or a game game that he has to go to. Or there is something. <laughs> so there is always something. You're just hoping that you're with that one person that picks you. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I mean, I get- you, I gave you, sorry, you know, I gave you, seriously, what's the, what's the toughest example, right? Because mm-hmm. the game, you say, what do you mean? You can record that nonsense. <laughs> but what do you mean? 